Gina and I are at the store trying to pick out some grass for this project we're working on. This place is right next to the freeway. It's a little unnerving. How scary is that? And then we got to thinking, can you imagine living in those apartments right there? I think you'd have to definitely have some earplugs for that one. <laughs> we were thinking of using this sono tube for the telephone pole, but we decided to use some foam that was donated to us for a past project. Here's a saguaro we did for our Western Ghost Town a couple years ago. And I was going to make more, but I ran out of time and I didn't even really get to finish this the way I wanted to. So we had two other long sections. And those sections are now going to be turned into a telephone pole. So here's one of those sections that's cut. And then what we do is we draw a circle and we try to make the circle as big as it will allow. So we came to this edge, that edge, and so forth. Then what we do is we figure out a measurement. And this is about three inches from here to there, to there, to there. And then what we'll do is we'll take our hot wire, um, hot knife, and we'll just cut those sections down. Gina's hot butter knife. <laughs> like a big stick of butter. <laughs> And then we'll round it. I have a log. Not the sense that you think I have one. I kind of, just to get an idea, make sure I'm kind of don't have any high spots, I just use a little trusty piece of wood here. And then I take Gina's brush here. <laughs> That's to keep my mane looking good. <laughs> yeah, and then once we get done with that, the next step is I'll use this rasp. And it kinda, kinda smooths things out just a little bit more. I can have Gina go through here and smooth that out. Some sandpaper next. This is probably making it a lot nicer than it needs to be, but. This is what a brand new telephone pole is. <laughs> it's not too bad. Looks pretty good. Now we got a three quarter inch conduit pipe and half of it is on this side and then we're going to stick the other half in this side. What we're gonna use is some adhesive and we're gonna put it right around here first and then we're gonna slide them together, stick them and you can use liquid nails, any kind of foam, adhesion, glue, and you should be good. Hopefully this works. Not the kind of glue we normally use. Hit the pipe in the middle. Why is it whenever you want to show something, <laughs> it always messes up? Oh, you know, I went through the other one on that one. I think you did. It was a slight angle. These are just shish, shish kebab sticks. Yeah. We're, the idea is to get so many of these wedged in here that it... Keeps it. Yeah. Keeps it together. Now the hard coat that we put on this should also help. Oh. Okay, there's that one. Whoa. <laughs> Don't shoot your wife with great stuff. No, thank you. And this is to get in there and fill the gaps. Sure is some great stuff. <laughs> great until it gets on your clothes and your hair. On your fingers. <laughs> <laughs> I almost didn't use gloves. Gina's all, hey, you want to put these on? Yeah. I'm like, there's... nah, I like picking this stuff out of my fingernails. Oh for my the gosh. Next. Two weeks. Perfect. 
Let me just let that sit. Yeah. Let's dry for a while. That's right. Let it expand to do its thing. Then we'll shave it down and hard coat it. Here's our new little piece that's going to be the one sticking out of the ground. This is about three and a half feet long. All right, so this is going to be a piece that has been busted off. Um, we're going to have to obviously take the end and make it look like it's all jagged and everything, but I'm trying to make this look like a log right now. And the best tool that I have is a soldering iron. And I'm really just in sweeping motions going just down the log. And you can go all the way down without pushing too hard. Trying to get it pretty straight, but still not 100% perfectly straight. Or I can come and just skip it a little bit. And the key as a close-up one right here is to not make it look like it's a like a dent and then you start like you really want to just like quickly just go like this and make it go up now if you notice that it does have a dent you can just come back and go like that if you don't have soldering iron you can use a dremel as well here's a little cutoff wheel i have and then just go in there and make some Like that. <laughs> <laughs> Smell it. <laughs> no. Chris has a fun job. He is carving out this part in random pieces. That way it looks like it's broken. Yeah. Because our pole is going to be cut in half. Or busted in half, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a stress reliever right there. <laughs> Hacking into the foam. There we go. Looks great. I really like this brushable epoxy to hard coat foam. It has a 20 minute pot life and you can recoat it every three hours, which is nice if you plan on applying three coats or more. We bought this piece of metal. I believe it's a part that goes to roofing and then it's like a drip piece right here. And uh, what we're gonna use it for is we're gonna cut this angle part off and then use this big piece side right here. And we made these little pieces right here. I'm going to paint it this caution yellow and then I'm going to rest the heads of these nails and those nails are going to go in these holes right here and those are the caution strips on the side of the telephone pole. We bought four of these antique telephone pole insulators. Fun fact, I used to have one as a door stopper when I was a kid but it was the um, clear blue colored one. Anyway, these are wood dowels, and all we did was grind the top to stick in there, and they're on there pretty good. We are going to put some glue inside there. We got all the hard coat all finished, and Gina's already started painting. I'm over fabricating some of the pieces, but uh, we're making some headway. All I did was a light brown underneath, then dry brushed a darker brown, and then an even darker brown in the cracks of the foam that I did. And I did that constantly throughout the whole foam log. In fact, I gotta brush some of this. Looks like some of the white bead foam is attracting itself to the pole. But then we have rusted screws going through there. We have bolted flat stock steel. anchored to both of those sides. We have these insulators that we got from a antique store. We've got a wire on it so when we go to the trade show we can wrap this around it. And this is just an old air hose and it's working out perfectly and we have three of those at 16 feet long a piece. 
I didn't have to do anything extra to these posts because they already looked aged. And if you look at real posts, they're not orange and rusty, so they must be made out of some kind of galvanized or something. And what's nice is Gorilla Glue makes a caulk, and it worked out really well. I also made these reflecting strips. We just rusted the tops of these old nails, and then I aged it with a little brown, a little black spray paint, and then watered down black. Here's two more. There's an invisible alien ship formation. Just can't see it, but the clouds are letting you know it's there. 